Hey, what's up everybody? Happy Easter. Back in New York. Heading to uh, Johnny Air Cargo. Back on the KLR. I'm gonna get on the XR really soon. So I just gotta get fix that flat tire that I got before I left. I got a flat tire on the rear. I'm, I bought new tires for it. I have it ready to go. It just it's so windy today. I'm kind of cold. I don't. I just don't feel like doing it. So I mean, I had to put a chain on the KLR yesterday because my neighbor was watching it for me and uh, he popped the chain on it but he did say that he was trying to start the bike with the bike in gear I guess he hadn't ridden in a while so he he was up in Bronx and he was trying to start it with a with the bike in gear I don't have a kickstart uh, kick um, kickstand shut off on here and then he was pulling the clutch in and starting and then lurching the bike, you know. I do have the switch on the clutch, though, the, uh, you know, the emergency cutoff. That, I enabled that because it seemed like a good thing to have. But the kickstand one actually messed up on me, um, you know, in the last winter. I was trying to, you know, I, I got on the KLR and I went to take off. As soon as I put the bike in gear, it just kept shutting off. And um, I diagnosed it to be the uh, kickstand emergency cutoff switch. But the problem was I just didn't want to deal with it. You know, it wasn't working at all. Like, if, if you know, I tried cleaning it, and I guess the winter, the salt winter roads just destroyed it. And it was it was done. So, I disabled that, but I don't know how, I guess he, you know, since he hasn't been riding in a while, because his ninja is down, I was trying to start it with, with the bike in gear, and he said it lurched, you know, and I think it, you know, a starter gear is, has a lot of torque, you know, you definitely don't want to be starting a bike like that, because I've done it, and I've seen what it does to a chain, I mean, it just yanks on that chain, and I think he probably... You know, it's an older chain with uh, 28,000 miles on it. He probably kinked the chain because the first turn he went around after doing that, he leaned, up, leaned to the right to go around the turn and the chain jumped on him. And the bike went down. It was a, and I felt bad because it was the first night that he, you know, I was on the plane and my bike alarm was going off and I was like, wow, what the hell? And I, I used the Wi-Fi calling on the plane to call him. And he said, I'm in a tow truck and the bike, the alarm's going off on the bike because uh, I don't have a key fob next to the bike. And the bike is in the back on the flatbed. And I said, oh my God, are you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, well, you know what? That's the most important thing. And when I got back, I had to put a chain on yesterday. I just ordered a clip-on chain. I, I didn't even want to be, deal with the rivet or anything. I usually don't use those. But I put a DID clip-on. Decent prices. Bought it on eBay. I shipped it before I came back from Philippines. I had it ready. And I just popped it on yesterday. But I saw the way he had that chain jam. I mean, the chain was just jammed. I mean, the rear wheel, like, it, it even took off one of the bolts on the... Uh, sprocket on the rear sprocket so he must have really went down hard on it and the bars feel a little bit tweaked but you know it's a KLR it's, it's just a, scratches and shit on a part for the course you know. but this is a big bike he mentioned he mentioned when it went down that um, there was a fireman there was like three firemen right there when he went down because he was up in Bronx by the um, 145th Street Bridge that goes across from Bronx into in Manhattan, and uh, you know the firemen were like, "Damn, this bike's heavy." Because you know, like a KLR, if you don't know it, it's real heavy. It's a steel frame. It's built like a tank. It's a, it's a nice machine, but it is fucking heavy as hell. I mean, 
And I, I had taken the KLR to a wireless site up in in Santa Barbara previously. I don't know what this guy from Georgia is doing, but uh, or South Carolina, whatever. I don't, when a fire truck's coming like that, you better get out of the way because they'll ram you. And um, so anyway, I had. I knew about the gen, even the gen one was fucking heavy as hell because I, I was going to a wireless site in Santa Barbara off of Fufio Road and man, I, I dropped this bike, you know, we had two miles off of the road to a wireless uh, mountaintop site and uh, you know, we needed to get up there with gear and stuff so we took the KLR on my gen one and uh, man, it was not, not a simple task. And uh, when I started getting into rough stuff, I told him you better jump off. We'll just walk, you walk up them, walk up the the last uh, 500 yards to the wireless side. I said, because this this bike is not going to be easy with both of us on it. And I started hitting some rocks and stuff, and uh, it was uh, it was rough to say the least. And then I dropped the bike, and it was on an incline. And uh, you know I did it. I picked it up myself, but. Because I was embarrassed, but I got to tell you, I, I don't think if you if you were dropping this bike, you know, four or five times in a, in a trip, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I definitely don't think it would be uh, something I could deal with. It would be super rough, like to be dealing with that. That's why I want to get on the XR, you know, because uh, as soon as I can, I, I get off this KLR because it's, it's heavy in the city, you know. You use it for the right purposes, you know. I was a little bit surprised that the, the new KLR weighs more than, the, than this one, which is a little surprising than the Gen 2. But, you know, it's built like a tank. There's ABS and all that stuff on there. There's added equipment so obviously it's going to weigh more it kind of makes sense when you think about it <clears throat> but you know um, in the winter time it is more planted the bike it's got a it's planted to the ground with the weight so it does have some benefits you got the wind protection but like I said I would rather be on the XR as soon as it gets to be summer because I just enjoy a lighter bike, you know, it's 350 pounds. For me, that's about the maximum I would actually want to be. And uh, I wish it was. My next bike, actually, I'm going to be going for something that's in the 350 range. With wind protection, though. No, I don't know. I'm, I was thinking of a, a CRF 300, but I just, I, I know I'm going to be disappointed with the, with the, with the performance on that on the highway. I just know it, you know, I mean, because the KLR, is a, it's got some oomph to it, you know, and you need that here in New York, when you got to get get away from some crazy driver or something, you know, you need that oomph to it, and uh, the CRF300L will probably be a, a lighter bike, be real comfortable for local city stuff, but once you get on the highway, I think it's going to be a problem, I, I'd have to test ride one out, I was hoping to get one in the Philippines to really get an idea of what the bike was like, but unfortunately I couldn't get the bike in Philippines because the, um, the the problem with the registration would take three months to register the bike, which is way too long. You know, I, I just couldn't do it. But I was hoping to show you guys a new bike in Philippines, but I ended up just riding around on the, uh, I ended up fixing the uh, Yamaha XT. Now that's a light bike. I mean, me and my wife picked it up together and lifted it off the ground. So. That just goes to show you how light that bike is, but that would be good for the city too, you know, if if you weren't going on the highway. Uh, that would be a perfect bike. So, but yeah, this thing went down with my neighbor. It had some, that you got some of this uh, plastic, you can see where it went down pretty hard. And that's about it though. <clears throat> and here plastics on the back took a nasty shot
That's about it though. Foot pegs probably took a shot too. Alright everybody, see you on the next one.